Hey, what's going on guys? Today I'm excited to talk to y'all about how to anchor better. While anchoring isn't exactly something I do regularly, I've accidentally stumbled upon several situations where I had to fall back to sight and be that anchor for several clutches. This video goes hand in hand with my video on how to roam better, if you haven't already checked that out, as they both establish the defensive structure. But today in this video we'll be looking at the setup process, aggressiveness, predictability, communication, and the final seconds an anchor has to deal with in holding the line. Starting off first, let's take a look at the setup process. While any defensive operator could technically be an anchor, the main ones you'll see are going to be Doc, Rook, Smoke, Mira, Echo, and Lesion. I included Lesion because he has great utility to deny quick entry into sight, especially slowing down pushes with shields. If a shield gets hit by a Lesion trap, majority of the time they'll back up and try and pull the needle out rather than just pushing through. These operators being stated, anyone can technically be an anchor when need be. In this video, you'll see me as Bandit a lot because I'm used to roaming, but when my team suddenly needs an anchor in a situation where we literally have no anchors and the objective is completely open. Nice. Then I'll fill that role. Now in the preparation phase, it's important to do two things. Number one, complicate your environment. You want your attackers to second guess where you're going to be on site. What I'll do is make lots of holes up top on a soft wall and maybe a couple on the bottom. That way, hopefully your attacker has to check several different holes before finding you behind yours. This amount of time they expose themselves could be the amount of time you need to get a nice headshot. And number two, create sight lines and rotate holes. Now I'm speaking from a mainly bomb player's perspective here, but you never ever want to cut off your ability to reach the other objective easily. You want there to be several ways you can transition in between sites, if at the very least shotgun the bottom parts of the soft wall so that you can lie down prone and catch the feet of any attackers that enter that site. Shotgunning the bottom parts of soft walls are super effective as the attackers won't be hopping in sight to prone, meaning they probably won't see you before you've already gotten a few shots in. Now let's move on to aggressiveness, which is minimal. The role of the anchor is mainly to hold angles and give callouts. You want there to be able bodies in sight creating fear and uncertainty for the attacking team trying to decide when to push in. You need to be giving your roamers compass callouts on where the attacking push is happening and giving them time to make that flank. This is why you need to be holding cheeky and tight angles on sight. There isn't any reason you should be overly aggressive in peeking a blackbeard or a smoking glass. They need to come to you and in the line of sight of your small angle. So what happens when a buck starts hitting the floor or ceiling of the objective? Do you peek him. I'd say if a sledge or buck is busting the ceiling out, you have a better chance of killing him than they do you at that moment. What you see is a hole they just made, so you know exactly where they'll be peeking from and can start firing immediately. What that buck or sledge has to do is scan the room from his hole trying to spot where you'll be. In that situation, you as the anchor have the advantage given you can pre-fire that exact hole and try to land the headshot, while they're trying to find where you are in the room. Now on the flip side, if the buck is hitting you from underneath, you're at a disadvantage. Advantage. Peeking him is like the sledge trying to peek you from up top. It's just a harder angle. If someone is bucking from underneath, I'd definitely be more cautious and even avoid peeking it. If they end up opening up a larger expanse of the floor or ceiling, you're probably going to have to relocate to cover as you'll be more vulnerable and thus rely on your roamers to deal with the problem. Third, let's move on to predictability. How much should you be moving around in the objective? Typically, if I get droned out, I'm going to move. Now, this could be exactly what the attacking team wants. I certainly use the strategy of droning to get someone to move out of their angle myself, so you have to be prepared. When moving angles or moving around the objective, you need to be thinking where that attacker is holding his angle. When I cross, I'll sometimes add a pre-fire to ensure I move out of my location safely. But with an attacking team basing an entire push off of where you're going to be, I think it's smart to try and relocate even just a little. Anything helps in mixing up your predictability to ensure you don't get immediately pre-fired because you got droned out and you didn't move. So I'd say move when you can, and even pre-fire spawn when you do so to help protect you. If you're a faster operator like Legion or Smoke, you'll be able to move more safely than if you're a chunkier operator like Doc or Rook. These operators make lots of noise when moving and can be an easy target to hit as you'll be heard and you'll be slow. In addition, holding angles while prone or angles through furniture is the best bet. You want to lower your opponent's line of sight and make them have to correct their aim by the largest amount. Fourth, let's talk about communication. While we already mentioned the importance of giving compass callouts to your roamers, it's equally as important to communicate 
communicate with the other anchors, specifically dealing with who's covering what angle, what staircase, which room, etc. Additionally, you guys should let each other know what changes in the environment. Has the garage door been opened up? Which wall was just breached? Which hatch is now open? Where did you throw that impact grenade for a reroute? Where is Buck hitting the ceiling? These types of changes are important to call out given you don't want another anchor to be oblivious to an exposed position. Let everyone know where you're dealing with an attacker, which room, and which direction. Finally, let's talk about those final seconds of the round. How should you handle that last push? Should you peek or should you not? Again, speaking from a mainly bomb player's perspective here, it all depends on the situation. Nevertheless, remember not to reload too quickly as the team might be pushing as a group, and you want to keep your gun up. Hide for a second and reload if you have to. It's all about playing time and trying to make them plant. Planting while the time is ended means they're defenseless and you'll have an easier kill. The reason why I'd suggest you don't peek until time is run out is that you can't be sure if that operator has the diffuser or not. They could be scanning still looking for you to poke your head out even as the clock is at 2 seconds. Let them walk into your angle. Unless you're sitting on the diffuser yourself, get ready to push, but wait till the clock has officially hit 0 and they're planting. Because a lot of players will fake the plant. They want you to start running towards them, giving them an easier kill while you have your gun down. If you want to get super mind tricky when you hear them plant, you could start running, then stop to fake them off the plant, so it's like a fake to the fake plant. It can all get pretty confusing and strategical in those final seconds, is basically what I'm trying to say. Anyway, as an anchor, play the clock. That's your main goal. The attacker has the burden to plant before time runs out. You simply have to survive the round. This allows you to have a more passive playstyle than the attacker who has to be aggressive. But that's it for today, guys. Thank you all very much for watching. I'm still going to be working on that solo queue video, as that seems like a popular topic to cover next. So as far as my tip videos go, a video on solo queue strategy will probably be the next up. In the meantime, I believe I'll have one or two other uploads before then, but we'll see how this week works out as I'm about to leave town again. Anyway, take it easy guys, and I'll see you all in the next one.